Despite their denials, the Tories can't escape the ghosts at their banquet. I walked into the Hotel Gander on Friday night for the 2016 Progressive Conservative AGM, expecting to find a funeral. Instead, the place was bristling with energy. Now, it helped that there were a few federal conservative leadership hopefuls schmoozing around looking for money. Paleoconservative Brad Trost was there handing out beer tickets in exchange for your soul, while Kelly Leach told anybody who'd listen that Canadian values would solve the provincial debt. There was also a fair bit of fanboy foolishness surrounding Maxime Bernier. The PC Mun contingent made no secret that they were almost entirely in the bag for Bernier. Most of the joy, though, was locally sourced. The PCs may have been trounced in the 2015 provincial election, but, as more than one Tory made clear over the weekend, Premier Dwight Ball has been the gift that keeps on giving. It's been a great year to sit in opposition and fiddle while Rome burns. But as the weekend wore on, the convention seemed less energetic than agitated. The next steps promised by the organizers were leading to the next dead end. It was an offer of rebuilding without renewal, re-election without reflection. If last year was supposed to teach the Tories a lesson, it's not clear how many were actually paying attention. The first sign that all was not well in Tory land was the fact that nearly every person who spoke at a mic this weekend made a plea for unity. Maintaining a united front was never a problem under the iron thumb of Danny Williams, and the sheer inertia of the old man carried the party forward through 2011 and beyond, even through 2014, when the headless party tried to eat itself, like, three times. Usually the grassroots doesn't get a say in party policy during the convention. They're traditionally only permitted to reaffirm the Führer Prinzip and sing from the leader's hymn book. But this time around, given two hours to actually speak their minds, dissidents started coming out of the woodwork. It was a refreshing moment of principled political discussion, especially in front of a curious media. Membership covered a surprisingly rich spectrum of opinion, from a vocal block of Trostiites itching to swap the Human Rights Act with the Book of Leviticus, to a youth wing determined to sell off every piece of the public interest to the highest bidder, and covering every red, blue, orange, and green Tory in between. Then news broke on Twitter that the activists blockading Muskrat Falls were literally storming the barricades while we were sitting down for a stuffed turkey dinner. The setting of a ballroom full of oblivious Tories was surreal, and it became increasingly unlikely that anybody was going to be singing karaoke to Muskrat Love tonight. But Labrador is far away from Gander, and 2016 is far away from 2012. So far, in fact, the most of Paul Davis's keynote address pretended that neither of them existed at all. Now. Just in case this perfect marriage of rank entitlement and forced amnesia wasn't clear enough at dinner, Davis doubled down during the scrum. The party regrets nothing, not even the $2.2 billion outgoing deficit. It denies any and all responsibility for the problems at Muskrat Falls, and it has no constructive alternative to offer on the Liberals' handling of the methylmercury issue. But please, give them another crack at it. They've definitely earned it. It's just too early to be talking about leadership. Few party stalwarts, including potential leadership candidates yes, Steve Kent and Chess Crosby, seemed any more inclined than Davis to own up to the party's past. Everybody was more than eager to point out that the Liberals were choking on a poison chalice, but few people wanted to admit who filled that cup in the first place. Everybody at that banquet could see the ghosts of Danny Williams and Kathy Dunderdale standing behind Davis at that podium, but nobody had the guts to speak their names. The closest anybody came was when Shani Ganok played the 2007 election anthem Home Boys Home as they were wrapping up their set for the night. But by then, the party was over, and the hangover was setting in. I am Drew Brown.